This video is going to be the first installment of a little deep dive series I'll be doing on the Lumix S52X, and I thought the best place to start would be a comparison between the long gob and all inch codecs that are available on this camera. So that means that in this video, I'll be doing some image quality comparisons between the two compression types. I'll show you guys how each codec behaves in editing, and also just some general trivia on how all inch and long gob are different from one another. First of all, let's just quickly go over the fundamental differences between all intra and long gop, and it's actually really simple. So the gop in long gop stands for group of photos, and that's because long gop compresses multiple frames together, whereas all intra compresses each single frame individually. So even though all intra is still compressed, the files are much larger and retain a lot more information than the long gop codex would. So for example, if you're filming a static scene where the background stays the same and you're the only subject, a long gop codec will essentially share some of the pixels from another frame in the group meaning that not all of the information in each frame is captured. And that's why static scenes like this make for a very unfair comparison between the two compression types. But with an all-inch codec, every single pixel in every frame will be captured. So therefore, all-inch codecs generally look better during scenes that have a lot of movement since each frame actually gets a full readout, meaning that there's more information and therefore less artifacts compared to long gop. If you look at the record quality options on the Lumix S52X, you'll notice that the all intra option for 4K 25p has a data rate of 400 megabits a second. Whereas for the 4K 50p, the lowest all intra data rate is 600 megabits a second, and it can even go up to 800 megabits a second if you're prepared to record to an SSD. This is largely due to the fact that there's more frames being recorded, and as I said earlier, each individual frame of all intra will get a full readout. Whereas if you look at the data rate for the long gop version of 4K 25p, it's only 150 megabits a second. And then the data rate for 4K 50p in long gop is 200 megabits a second. So that means that there's less information due to the fact that not each frame gets a full readout. And that's ultimately why all intra is considered to be the better codec for professionals. The best way to compare the two is by showing two examples where there's a fair amount of movement. And the most common one is moving water since that movement is quite unpredictable. I will show you an image quality example between the two, but please bear in mind that YouTube's compression will ruin it anyway, so it makes the visual differences very hard to find between the two. A good rule of thumb to have if you're confused about which one to use is just to think about how much movement the scene is going to have. So chances are the difference between recording in long gop and all intra during an interview, for example, uh, well then the results are gonna be negligible because there's not that much movement. However, if you're recording in 50p with the intent to slow down the footage by half and you're trying to capture a lot of movement, then of course all intra will definitely be the one to use. Since each frame gets a full readout, the slow motion will look far more smooth and more natural with less artifacts. When it comes to editing, it kind of works the opposite way to what your brain would naturally think. So when I started out, I assumed that a smaller file would be easier for my computer to handle, when in actual fact, it's the complete opposite. A more compressed file requires more decoding, therefore it's more intensive for the computer to transcode, whereas a less compressed file requires less decoding, therefore making it easier for the computer to transcode, and that also means that the playback will generally be smoother. If you're like me and own some pretty decent computers for video editing, like any of the Apple Silicon Macs, then the editing experience may not differ too greatly from one codec to the other. However, if you're editing on an older Mac or PC, then of course this difference will be quite obvious. So in order to test how well the all intra and long gop codecs edit with, I'm gonna do the test but with two computers. So I'm gonna use my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Uh, I think I ended like 2021. So it's one of the better newer Macs with the Apple Silicon chip. And then my old MacBook Pro, which is an Intel Core i7, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. But I'll show you sort of what an older sort of spec computer uh, looks like when you are using all intra and long gop while trying to edit with both. And then what a sort of newer one looks like. So. I've just made a timeline here with a long gop timeline and what I've added is I've added some what well, a title I've added a color um, color solid so a sort of overlay if you like and I've also just given the clips a rough grade um, and I'm playing it back now and as you can see it plays back super smoothly there's no drop frames it looks really really good I mean you can pause it you can scrub through without any issues as well so as you guys can see on this computer long gop is absolutely fine but yeah so now I've um done the exact same thing with this time of all intra. As you can see, there's little bars showing that it's rendering here, the little sort of 
whatever these little dots are at the top. But you can see, again, all intra, as expected, runs really, really smoothly on this too. Um, you can scrub through it, it's absolutely fine. Um, you know, carry on playing here. And again, these clips have been graded very slightly. I mean, I just put a sharpening layer, um, a lot wheels and curves, so not too much, but that's normally the sort of standard color correction workflow that I use. As you can see, absolutely no issues with both of them. Um, if you guys have got a similar spec machine yourself for editing, so if you're using any of the M1 MacBooks or the M1 computers in general, um, then just know the difference between long gop and all intro for your normal editing workflow shouldn't really be too different. Um, these machines are fantastic at handling the more compressed codecs. Of course, when you start adding, you know, animation and keyframing and, you know, special effects stuff, if you like, then it may start to chug up a little bit. So all intro might be the better option to use in that use case. Um, but, but for your sort of, you know, generic sort of video where it'll be maybe like two angles, for example, some B-roll, some music and some titles, long gob and all intro will work absolutely fine on a more up-to-date Mac or PC that has the decent graphics card, I guess or whatever it is that a PC needs to make it better at rendering video. Right, so doing the exact same test now, but this time with the older MacBook Pro. Let's go ahead and just try and play this long gop timeline. It's the exact same one, so as you guys can see here, if I click on here, you can see it's got all of your, um, you know, it's got a sharpening layer, it's got your light wheels, curves, etc. It's got your titles, and we're just gonna hit play. So far, it's doing okay. I mean, it looks a little bit laggy. Um, to be expected, it's quite an old machine. It doesn't actually play too badly, I must say. It's not doing a terrible job. But yeah, you can see it's definitely more laggy. And then if I, yup, there we go, the flame, fr the flames? Fucking straight up flames were dropped during playback. Boy, that's what happened. The actual scrubbing experience is actually really nice. So if you just, you know, need to scrub, maybe you can put all of your effects and stuff on afterwards, but it's not too bad. And let's just play this one back. As you guys can see up here, it's actually rendering the timeline currently. That's what these little dots mean at the top. Um, and you know, if you have an older machine, it might actually be worth you just waiting out for a few, I don't know, minutes or so to let the timeline properly render through and then watch it back. And it's, you know, somewhat smooth, it's playing back, but it still does look a little bit choppy. Uh, as we go into the next clip, yeah. And then stacking two clips is always where, you know, it would struggle. It's doing okay, but it's dropping frames for sure. And then scrubbing, like I said, scrubbing's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing anything too intensive with either all intra or long gop on a really old machine. Um, stop lying to yourself, you might need a new laptop or computer if you are struggling just to sort of do regular 4K playback. I do know, however, that this machine is good with ProRes. So ProRes 422, LT, HQ, RAW, ProRes, ProRes works perfect. Well, not perfectly, but it works very well with an older machine too. So yeah, that's my takeaway. Every single YouTube video I've recorded in the last year has been shot using long gop codecs, and I've never really noticed any issues. So even though the science behind it would say that it's an inferior option compared to all intra, it just comes down to how much quality you need for each project. Having the option to use all intra codecs internally with the S52X is great and will definitely be a huge help to those with less powerful computers. Also, if you just want to get the absolute best image quality possible out of your camera and the slightly larger file sizes don't bother you, then all intra is definitely the best internal recording codec to use.